Hey guys, it's Kristen. So in today's video, I'm gonna not only show you how to do paper mache, but I'm gonna show you two different recipes that you can use. Um, I've seen a lot of different variations of recipes online, and I've tested a few of them, and the two that I'm gonna show you are the best ones that I found. Make sure you guys stay to the end because I'm gonna show you a couple things not to do, and I'm also gonna show you projects that you can do with paper mache, because you might be like, well, who does that anymore unless you're like in kindergarten? But there's actually a lot of fun things you can do with this, um, so wait till the end to check those out. For this first recipe, we're gonna be using flour. So what you'll need is one cup of flour, one cup of warm water, a half a tablespoon of salt, and then a fork or a spoon or maybe a mixer, just anything to mix around your um, ingredients. Then you also need a dish, a pan, just something to put it in. Um, I recommend something you can just throw away after. So we will start by adding in the flour. Now I do recommend um, if you can try to break up some of these clumps before you add the water in, it will help a little bit. And now I'm gonna add in the warm water. So I'm just gonna do a little bit, maybe half, uh, mix it around and then we'll add the other half. It makes it just a little easier to mix it and you don't have to worry about it splashing everywhere. So it should be really thick and pasty at first and I'm already getting flour everywhere. So now we're gonna add the other half in. All right, so I'm gonna just mix this up and then I'll come back to you guys because this is gonna take a minute or two just to get fully mixed. All right, so I've got this mixed up pretty well. There is a few clumps in here, so do your best to get the clumps out. Now we're gonna take the salt and just sprinkle this on top here. Now you might be asking, why salt? Really, it just helps preserve your project um, and keeps it from getting moldy. So this is the consistency it should be. Um, it should run off your fork. If you hold your fork or spoon up and it just gets stuck, you do not have enough water. Make sure before you start this project, you have your strips of newspaper cut and ready to go because sometimes the glue mixture and the flour mixture can start hardening up and thickening up um, very quickly. So having that ready to go is gonna be much better for you. All right, so now I've got all my stuff ready to go. Um, I do recommend getting some sort of a bowl because it's gonna be easier to place your balloon inside of it to hold it in place. All right, so I'm just gonna take my strip of paper and kind of just place it right in there. Um, not too much and you can see it's gonna be very thick. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of run my finger over it to get some off and then use that same finger to just kind of wipe it on the back. Just make sure both sides are completely covered with your mixture. Now when you first place this on here, the balloon is gonna be weighted, so it's gonna wanna fall over like that. So you're just gonna have to kind of hold it with one or let it fall. There we go, got it balanced, perfect. Um, so now I'm gonna dunk the next one in there. And that's just because it's falling over because the weight, right? Balloons are pretty much weightless and then we're putting this heavy, thick stuff on it. So I'll put another one on this side just to um, kind of even the weight out. And then what I like to do is smooth it out. So I don't know if you could see there's like some bumps there. Just make sure it's smoothed out like that. So now I'm just gonna continue and we're gonna get the whole thing covered. As you're applying the newspaper, um, after you do maybe, you know, I don't know, five to 10 strips, you may wanna rinse your hands off because what's gonna start happening is the more you use the flour mixture or the glue, it's gonna start getting a buildup on your hands and your hands are gonna get really sticky, which is gonna be harder for you to like grab the newspaper and keep applying it. It's just your hands and everything will start sticking to each other. So it does help if you can rinse your hands off a few times while you're applying the newspaper. All right, so I got everything covered. Um, you definitely wanna look it over and make sure you don't see any of the color. So the, mine's like a bright green. If I see anything, even if it's covered, but I can still see the green, it's most likely not thick enough. So put another piece of paper over it. Now for our second option, we're gonna be using glue. So what you'll wanna do is have one cup of glue or two of these bottles, a half a cup of warm water, and then one teaspoon of salt, and then again, a fork, a spoon, a mixer, something like that. And then we will also need some sort of bowl or dish to mix it around. To make the glue mixture, we're gonna start by adding in one cup of glue or two of these containers. Now we're gonna add our warm water in, and now we'll start mixing this around. So again, this is gonna take a few minutes, so I'm gonna get all of this mixed, and then I will show you what the next step is. All right, so I've got this all mixed up and it should be kind of a creamy consistency. So you can see it still looks like glue, um, but it's like watery glue. So if this looks more translucent, where it looks more like water, you don't have enough glue in here. So it should just look like very soupy glue. And now we're gonna add our salt in. And we'll mix that around. 
All right, now as I mentioned earlier in the video, um, you might see a lot of recipes online where the glue to water ratio is equal. So like one cup of each or two cups of each. When I tested this, it did not work for me. It was way too watery. So I don't recommend that particular recipe. Um, we're gonna do the same thing, move that. We're gonna just stick the paper in there and then I'm just gonna wipe it down a little bit make sure it's on both sides. Go. You will notice that this is going to be much more watery than when you do the flour mixture. The mixture with flour is going to be very thick. It's like if you've ever made dough, um, this is going to be a lot more watery. So you can, it's a little bit, some people have that as a preference because it's, it goes on a little bit easier. Um, your hands will get sticky though, just like it did with the flour. So you will probably have to do a little rinse off here and there but we're just gonna cover the whole balloon and then I'll be right back with you. You are going to wanna make sure you do two to three layers of the newspaper um, when using the glue mixture. All right, so I've done multiple layers. Um, I did about a total of three layers on this balloon. Um, so now all we have to do is set this aside somewhere and let it dry for at least 24 hours. Now when you're letting these dry, you can either let them sit in a dish like this um, the only downside is you will have to rotate this probably once an hour uh, because what will happen is all the glue will start going to the bottom and it could get stuck. Um, also, it may leave a circular indentation along the bottom of your paper mache project. So you will want to keep rotating these if you're going to leave them in a dish. The other option you have is to take some string and then we're going to tie it around the end of the balloon um, and hang it somewhere. All right, so here I've hung these in our garage just off this table, and that way um, I don't have to worry about them sitting in a dish, rotating them, I can just leave them here for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, and then we'll come back and check on them. Now you are gonna wanna put down some newspaper, and more specifically for the balloon with the glue mixture, because it will fall to the bottom and start dripping. So this is about an hour to two hours after, and you can see there's a puddle of glue, so this is exactly why you would want to make sure you have a newspaper put down. All right, so I've got both of my balloons completely dried. Um, it's been almost 48 hours, so we're gonna test and see how these turned out. Um, I do notice right off the bat, this one um, with the flower does seem a little more firm. Um, it can't really push on it too much. There's a little bit of slack, but on this one, it's a little more flexible, I guess is the word. But let's cut it open and see what we've got. We'll do the flower one first. All right, so I'm gonna start with the flower one. We'll just cut the balloon. So it's kind of like I can feel it deflating inside, if you can hear it. So you can kind of see in there, the balloon completely deflated and is just kind of sitting in there. So as far as the mache, um, I feel like it held up really well. Um, I feel like this is pretty firm. It's not really collapsing or anything. So I think it turned out really good. Let's do the other one. We'll do the same thing. I'll just kind of cut the side here. There we go. And then I'm gonna try to cut some of this back a little bit. I can kind of hear it coming off. All right, so with this one, I don't know if you can see it, the like coloration on it. Do you see how the inside looks like green? Um, that is because the balloon did not pull back. You guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm trying to pull the balloon off. So there, that came off. All right, now as far as this one goes, this does actually feel pretty firm. Um, if you know whatever project you were doing this would definitely work the insides really smooth So I think as far as the paper mache part goes um, they both turned out really good So just a couple quick pros and cons regarding each recipe So I did notice with the flour mixture um, It was a little thicker and it was more sticky and a little messier to apply but I only had to apply one layer of newspaper. It does have a little bit of a rough texture to it, so that could affect when you're painting it and stuff. But on the other side, it is a lot more firm, so it's gonna be probably more durable. Now with the glue recipe, it was much easier to mix and to apply. Um, it was a lot more watery and I didn't get as much of it all over my hands and it was a lot easier to use. The downside is I did have to apply three layers so it took a lot more time. It does have a much smoother surface. There isn't a lot of rough edges or anything like that. And I don't know if this is a pro or a con but it is a little more flexible so if you're looking for something like that, that might be a pro but if you're not, then it could be a con. Both of these pretty much had the exact same drying time um, so that's not really a factor at all. 
and you can see that the one with the flower is much lighter so that could actually work as a primer as well so it's really going to come down to you know what type of project are you doing and what's going to be best for you but i do recommend the two recipes that i've listed in the video description All right guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and then hit this bell so you're alerted when I upload a video. And I'll talk to you later.